Hey everyone, this is Nick and I'd like to welcome you back to the next video in the Data Lifecycle Collection. Today, we're going to focus on an example of how you can use Cloudera Data Engineering to take data from various different sources and combine it to create an enriched data set from which you can better make engineering and business decisions. In today's example, we're putting ourselves in the shoes of a fictional electric car company. This company has recently rolled out a new experimental electric motor for their cars and needs to create a pipeline that takes all the data relevant to these new motors and combines it to produce a more useful data set for future analysis. To start off, we spooled up both a data warehouse running Hive, which will serve as both the locating the raw data as well as the landing location for our final enriched data set. This will give us a good platform to scale up our resources as the data grows over time, as well as give us easy access to tools such as Hue and DataViz to query and visualize the data later on. We're also going to create a new data engineering environment, and within it, we'll create a new virtual cluster. This virtual cluster is where we'll be creating our data engineering pipeline, and it represents a set of compute resources that can be automatically scaled up or down depending on the workload. This means that you won't have to waste company dollars hosting unneeded compute resources. With the virtual cluster spooled up, we can now go into it and create our first job. In this case, we're going to use PySpark to do all of our data manipulation. One of the big benefits of running PySpark from within Cloudera Data Engineering is that we have easy access to the data sitting in our data warehouse. This is thanks to having platform-wide security and governance while working within a Cloudera Data platform. Now, let's go take a closer look at the PySpark job that we're going to run to wrangle all this data together. Going into the PySpark job, the first thing you will be doing, aside from just setting some Spark configurations, is going to be to pull all the data we're looking to use into memory. To do this, we can use simple SQL syntax to query tables that live inside our data warehouse. This is an easy time to do some renaming of parameters as well if you'd like. Next, we're going to do some basic data cleansing. Since this company collects any and all registrations to their website, we want to filter out any customers that have input an age less than 16 years old. While our cleansing is rather simple here, removing irrelevant data is a hugely important step in most data pipelines. Having brought all our data into Spark, we'll start enriching our data by joining together various tables. PySpark is nice in that you can interact with the data in various ways. For this first join statement, you'll see that we wrote an SQL query which runs against our data warehouse and brings the results of the query into an object in memory called the data frame. Here we're joining car sales data with customer data so that we can combine customer metadata such as age and contact information with the sales information such as the car's VIN, the model, and how much it was sold for. For the next layer of data, instead of writing an SQL query, we're going to use a Spark function to join two tables on a common key. In this case, we're taking geolocation data to attach latitude and longitude information based on the zip code the customer provided. For the last two pieces of information, we're going to be again using the Spark functions to bring in motor installation data based on the VIN of the car and tying it all the way back to factory data to be able to know which factory, machine, and when each motor was actually manufactured. With all our data now stitched together, all that's left to do is to take it from memory and save it into our data warehouse. Thanks to Spark and being within the Cloudera data platform, it's as simple as a one-line command. Now let's go back into our virtual cluster and actually run the Spark job. Going into our virtual cluster, we'll go ahead and create a new job. Once we upload our Python file, we can choose all the fine-grained controls over how we'd like this PySpark code to run, from basic scheduling to more advanced resource allocations. For now, we just want to run this once, so we'll turn the scheduling off and leave the rest as default. Just like that, our job is off and running. Now we can go and monitor how this job is doing. One of the great features of Cloudera Data Engineering is that you have a single pane of glass to monitor all of your pipelines, which makes it easy to keep track of how everything is moving along. Once our job is done, we'll get access to a nice visual breakdown of all the stages of our job and what resources were used and for how long. We can also go and check our logs, where we've printed some debugging helpers to confirm that our data looks how we expect it to. Sure enough, the data looks great, and we can confirm that we've inserted it into our data warehouse. Now that we have all the relevant data in an enriched table, 
we can answer more advanced requests. Imagine one of your factories had a manufacturing issue over the course of a week. With this enriched data set, you could confidently pull a list of affected customers immediately and contact them offering them proactive maintenance. You could even alert service facilities near the customer's location beforehand. Thanks for watching today. If you found this interesting, don't forget to subscribe to see future videos. If you have any questions, head on over to the Cloudera community where there are plenty of other users ready to help answer any questions you may have.